Hi, I'm Ashley Steinbach, the Environmental Product Manager here at in situ, and today we'll be talking through how to set up and configure your Aquatrol 600. All right, so the first thing I want to show you is the contents of the box. So if you open your box, the first thing you'll notice on top is a quick start guide. This will give you a very quick run through of how to set up the instrument, configure, and perform your initial connection with it. Here is a software CD, and then behind the quick start guide, you also have your certificate of analysis. So when you look in the box, you will notice the instrument. You have a wiper or wiper port plug at the top. You will have the four original sensors that you picked and an RDO cap if that was part of your configuration. You start opening here, you will have some backup supplies available. So for a pH sensor, you will have your pH reference filling solution as well as some additional reference junctions. Your next, you will have a little maintenance kit that includes all of your lubricants, a micro SD card adapter, some additional screws and some cleaning supplies. In your center compartment, you will have uh, backup sensors, so any additional sensors or port plugs would come in this compartment. And then all the way on the side, you will have your batteries and then your tools that will help you to install your sensors and get your instrument set up. So the first thing you want to do to set up your instrument is pull out your sonde and remove your dust cover. So this really just helps to protect from dust and excess moisture on your cable connection. So the first thing we will start with is installing the batteries. So you want to remove the battery cover. You can see there's your spot for your batteries. There's a micro SD card right here, so something to keep in mind for duplicate data backup. So you'll grab your batteries. And as soon as you power the instrument, you should see your LCD come on and be displayed. Two other things I want to point out about the battery cover. You have a little switch right here that will tell you whether or not your battery cover is fully closed, as well as a little hide a key back here. So we provide additional tools to help you, but this can just act as a backup if you're out of the office and don't have your tools with you. So one other thing to note is there is a user replaceable dust kit in the battery compartment. And to remove and replace, you'll want to use your tool from the back of your battery cover. Stick it in the little hole right here, pop the other one out. If you see that this has turned to a light pink or a white color, it's time for it to be replaced. So you do have a spare in your original kit for your maintenance, and you should have a blue one. So it's very important to make sure that you watch this every time you're servicing the batteries. Push that back in, reinstall your key, put your battery cover back on. You're ready to go. You'll get a notification as to whether or not the battery cover is closed. Once that goes away, it's fully sealed and it'll tell you to the next thing to install your sensors. So next we will install the sensors. So you want to move your restrictor and you'll notice the different sensor ports in here. So it's very important to make sure that you start with your wiper. So this is at the very top and you'll see little notches at the top of the wiper that I'll show you what they do in just a minute. One thing before we install the wiper, you always want to make sure that you have enough uh, lubricant on your O-rings so you never want those to dry out. So when you're installing your sensors, you want to take a little bit of lube and you get a couple packs of it included with your instrument, about the size of a pea or so, maybe a little less, just a little bit on the surface of your finger. And then you want to make sure that the O-rings are free of debris and you put a very thin layer across the base of those two O-rings. Inspect and then install into the center port of your instrument. And it is keyed here too, so it'll help you to orient that. So next we will start installing our sensors. So it doesn't matter um, which port you put any of these sensors on. Again, you want to remove that dust cover. Check your O-ring grease. Make sure that's good to go. 
start putting the sensors in. And at the very top of this wiper is where you're going to see those notch grooves. And if you look at the back side of the sensor, you will also see the part that slides right into them. So it's very important to make sure that you have the sensors aligned up with that and then you push the sensors all the way down. So then you'll grab your next sensor, pull your cap off, put it in the next slot, and you can move your wiper out of the way. Uh, it has a slip clutch built in so you won't damage it by moving it. Make sure it's right inside of those slots and then continue moving. A couple things I do want to mention. If you have an RDO sensor, you want to remove the top cap that protects the lens. Inspect it to make sure it's clean of anything. If you do need to wipe it off, there's an alcohol wipe in your pack here. Remove the sensor and install this prior to installing onto the sonde. You can do it after, but it's a little bit harder, so I always recommend doing it prior. I'm going to push it all the way down, make sure it snaps into place, remove your dust cap, and then put it into your instrument. You can tell when you don't get it in because you'll see a gap in between the sensors. So if you do see that, you just want to pop it back out and make sure you get it all the way in. Next, we'll talk through the pH sensor. So this does come with a cap installed. It is important to keep this sensor wet. So you will notice that. Make sure you remove this before you put it into your instrument. All of the sensors themselves have built-in captain's screws, so you want to make sure that you tighten these all the way down before you put your restrictor on. You won't be able to get your restrictor on. You can slide your restrictor on. One other thing to note on this is there's multi-purposes for this particular restrictor. If you slide the restrictor on in this orientation, this is now your calibration mode or your storage mode. If you are ready to deploy, you want to take this off, remove the end cap, turn this around so your holes are near the bottom of the sensor, slide back on, put your end cap back on, and now you're ready to deploy. And next I'll show you how to remove the sensors. So if you need to replace one or you want to change to a different parameter type, you'll remove the restrictor. Use your tool to unscrew the screws at the bottom of the sensor. There's a little hole for the tool to go in. So stick it in that little hole, push the sensor up, it pulls right out. So a couple quick tips for when you're installing your cable. These are twist lock connection cables that will lock into place. So they are keyed, so when you're making your initial connection, you want to look for the flat part on your connector as well as the flat part in your cable. Line those up, should slide right in, push the connection down as far as possible, slide till it gets into the curved area, and then click into place. And that ensures that you're completely locked and sealed. So you'll take this part and attach the other end to the instrument. click into place. So when you're connecting to your instrument, it does have internal Bluetooth. So if you are outside of the water, you can use the Bluetooth that's in the instrument. If you do have the unit deployed, you will want to attach your wireless trollcom to the top of your cable and use this as your communication device. So to activate the Bluetooth on the sound, there are two ways to do that. You can either invert the instrument 180 degrees. As soon as your LCD display turns on, your Bluetooth is also activated. As long as you retain a connection, your Bluetooth will not turn off, even if the LCD goes blank. But the whole LCD and Bluetooth will turn off after 90 seconds of non-activity. The other way to activate your Bluetooth is actually to open your battery cover. So that battery cover sensor will also activate your Bluetooth and your LCD display. Once you've activated your LCD display and your Bluetooth, you will go to your tablet. You will open the app, the Bucitu app. It will say, please turn on your communication device. Or if you've already paired to your instrument, it will automatically find it. Click choose or add device. You can check on the side of the instrument for the serial number. If the serial number that appears is not the serial number on your device, you will click add new device. It will take you to your Bluetooth settings page and scan for devices. 
There's the serial number of my instrument, so I will click that to pair. Click your back button to go back into the app, and then you will see your instrument. Click on the instrument that you have, and it will go through finding and setting up your instrument. Thank you very much for the time today. If you do have any additional questions, please feel free to visit our website or call tech support.